How's it going guys? This uh, video is going to go over the process of importing your drawing into Live 2D. So first I'm going to show you how to prepare your drawing and then next we'll go over the processes of uh, ways you can import your drawing into Live 2D. There's a couple different ones you can do. So first we're, let's open up our paint program. So this is my drawing here. Now for your canvas size, make sure it's square. Live2D uses square canvas sizes and I'm right now I'm on 1024 by 1024 pixels. That used to be the max of what you can do in Live2D for the free version, but now they bumped it up to 2048 by 2048. So if you just made your drawing, I would recommend using as Biggest, the biggest size canvas as you can because it makes the drawings look a lot smoother and less pixelated. So to prepare your drawing, we want to separate each body part into segments. So each body part has their own layer. So I got, you know, lower arm has its own layer, the hand, uh, upper arm, things like that. So I'm just going to run through this here and kind of give you an example of how everything's laid out. So like the chin, these three are the mouths, mouth pieces. So I got a lower mouth, then I got the upper mouth, and then this is just the inside of the mouth. And then so all three of those are on separate layers. The nose, the bangs is on, the front of the hair is on its own separate layer. The left and the right side of the hair is on its own separate layer. And let's see, the eyeball, it's all on its own separate layer. Even the, the whiteness of the eyeball is on its own separate layer. Eye creases, eyebrows, those are all separate. Even in the lash, the upper and lower lash, you're going to put it on its own separate layers because they're going to have a uh, different movement. Now, I'm going to get rid of the face real quick to show you this. These are your upper and lower eyelids. This is what's going to cover the eye when the eye is closed. Now, in the new version, they made it so you can use a clipping mask instead of having to make these extra pieces um, to cover up some of your part of your drawing when you move it. So it's not mandatory anymore to make these, but I'm going to show you how to do it just in case because it's still a new thing and there's still some applications where the clipping mask won't work. So I'm going to show you the new way and the old way. All right, and uh, as I said, the eye white, the nose shadow, neck shadow, the neck itself. And then as you can see, the hair, the back of the hair is all filled up. There's no gaps. Make sure each layer is all filled up with color because these are going to be moving parts. This is going to move left, right, up, and down. And uh, if you have a gap, like just nothing in here, it's going to show. So just make sure you just fill it up. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to go back to the mouth real quick. And just show you, you can see that they have part of the flesh just kind of covering for the, the inside of the mouth. So, like I said, the clipping mask is there now, but I'm going to show you both the old way and the new way. So, all right. So, I'm going to make my character visible again, and we're going to go over the process of importing your drawing into Live 2D. Be right back. All right. So, like I said, there's a couple different ways you can do this. Um, if your paint program can save files as a PSD, then that's great. You got you can do it the really easy way, which is what I'm going to show you right now. Um, of course, if you don't have a program that can do that, that's fine. I'm going to show you the old way anyway. But I'm going to go over the easy way because it's faster and easier to explain. So I'm going to go to File, and I'm going to Save As. And I'm just going to go to Photoshop Document. And I'm just going to save that in my folder where I keep my drawing. All right. So now I'm going to open up Live 2D Modeler and you know do what you got to do to get through the window. So to import this, I'm going to go to File, PSD Import, and there it is. I got it. It's already in my folder on my desktop. PSD. I'm going to open that up, and as you can see, everything's already separated. It's 
already cut out piece by piece. Um, this is a really nice and easy way of doing things. If you want to do everything manually the way you want it, that's fine too. But uh, this is like a very streamlined process of how you can do it. So um, after I'm satisfied with everything, everything looks okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And there you have it. Everything's already imported the way you want it. You don't have to place any parts um, to a guide image or anything, which I will show you pretty soon here. But all you have to do is you gotta organize everything. So each different part is located under PSD and drawable object. And you got you know all your parts that you had in layers from your uh, paint file. So like face here, if I want to organize that and put it into a subsection down here, um, what I want to do is click on face and then it'll say parts right here. So you want to just, instead of PSD, just put it into the right subsection. So face, of course, goes to face. There you go. So it's already in there. And that's all you have to do. And just do that for the rest of them. Um, all the eye parts go into eyes. Uh, you know, the neck can go into neck like this, these two I'll put for the neck and so on and so forth. It's fairly easy. Um, it's just a little bit tedious, but it's not as bad as the other way that I'm going to show you right now. But uh, yeah, just keep doing that and your file will pretty much be fully imported into Live 2D. And then after that, you can animate it. So the old way is what you want to do first is you want to save a guide image because you're going to need one. It's not going to automatically put everything together for you. So I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to save as, and I'm just going to save it as a JPEG. I'm going to put it in that same folder. I'm going to call it host at ex guide, just so I know it's easier to find. Make another save file. So you got one that's going to be like this, but next we're going to separate all the body pieces like Live 2D did when we imported our PSD. We're going to manually separate everything. So instead of saving it on the same file that we have already, let's just make a copy of our file. That way we have one that's all together and one that's all apart. So I'm just going to save this as clip studio paint file for me and just I'm gonna call it a part so now when I go into my desktop and go to my folder I got one that says a part and one that's just my normal one so working with the one that says a part I'm just gonna go through all these body parts I'm just gonna give them its own spot make sure they have enough space in between them because we're gonna be cutting them out and we don't want to have parts uh, touching each other when we do that. So I'm going to go ahead and go through this. It's going to be a little bit to go through. So I'll probably just go ahead and speed run this. All right, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, as you can see, the PSD probably did a better job than I did, but um, this is basically how you want it. You want everything separate. When you go to cut it out, you don't want anything, any of the dots to be interfering with each other when you go around these different layers. So once we're satisfied with that, we're gonna go to File and Save As. Well, first let's save, we'll just save it as, as it is right now. And then we'll go to File, Save As, and go to PNG. So save it as a PNG file in that same folder or whatever you have where you saved your drawing. All right. 
And now I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to go back to my live 2D modeler and go through the windows. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to open my PNG file. So here's my PNG file right here, host EX apart. And it'll give you two um, options here, place as a texture or place as a guide image. So this is gonna be our texture file. Everything that's all apart, we're gonna be using for modeling. So go ahead and hit okay. And then it'll give you just, it'll just show you what the file is. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay through this to accept that I'm importing it. And there you go, except for it didn't import any of anything into our texture sheet here. So we have to do it manually. So before we do that, I'm gonna import the guide image that we made earlier. So I'm gonna to go to file, open, and I'm gonna to go to hostexguide.jpg. And I'm gonna open this as a guide image. So click on guide image, and then um, I already got the size on there, and hit okay. So now that we got our guide image placed, it will help us kind of piece back together our drawing the way it was. So what I'm gonna do is just make sure face is clicked. I'm gonna go to my texture list. I'm gonna click on this. This is just my texture file that we imported. And I'm gonna go to my face here and just kind of left click around it, make dots and just kind of make a cut all the way around it. When you open this editor here, it'll already be on insert point, so you could just start left clicking and cutting out your textures. If I need to delete a dot, I'll just uh, hold alt and then just left click, and now I'll delete the dot that I'm hovering over while I'm pressing alt. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. You could also go down to this eraser button and you can erase a lot of dots these way, this way. You can make this bigger or smaller. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and just delete these top three. And I could redo this. And there's other tools. You could edit the line or move points, things like that. Um, for this, what we can do is I can automatically generate lines. You can see how it has suggestion lines. Um, and it's just kind of just telling me what I should do to kind of separate this into triangles. And I could just automatically generate that by hitting this button here, automatic generate. And then it'll just generate what it thinks is best. And that's fine, but um, usually it's just better just to do it your own, your own way. So I'm gonna go undo, and I'm just gonna make a center point and I'm gonna go and just kind of, whoops. I'm just gonna go and spider web my way around this. To make this process faster, I can hold shift. I can hold shift before I click on the next dot here. And you can see my line didn't go away. I could still make multiple lines from the point that I was on. So instead of going back and forth all the time, this is way faster. I also got another tool. You could divide up the polygons that you already have made already, and it'll divide it into fourths. So I'll just click that, and like, I, don't, I didn't have to do anything. It just did it for me. Um, so yeah, like I said, you can't do it manually. The reason why we divide everything into the triangles is because we want to, uh, when we go to deform our parts, we want everything to look nice when it kind of folds up on itself. So once I'm happy with this, I don't really have to do much, it's just a face. So I'm gonna hit okay. And there you go. As you can see, my face went under the face subsection here. And I'm just gonna drag this over. And there you go. It's just kind of puzzle piece everything together. So if I need to edit this, I could just click on that and just click edit texture and it'll bring this up again. I can mess with the dots or do whatever I need to do. 
I'm going to hit cancel though. So you have to essentially do this for each and every part and then just bring it together. I know it's a slow and tedious process, but um, if you want to like go through and just do everything manually just to get the hang of it, or if you're really get really good at it, you know, a lot of people prefer it that way. So especially if you need a part to deform a certain way, um, you're going to have different triangle, triangle patterns to make it look nicer when it folds up on itself. So I'm just going to do another example here and I'm going to do um, part of the mouth. And I'm going to go click on texture list, click on my texture sheet, and I'm going to do the upper lip here. And I'm just going to go through the center line. Just make triangles out of that. This is just an example, so I'm not trying to be perfect, but if you want to be, try to do the best you can, you know, I totally recommend it. It really, it really does show when you get done with things or while you're trying to animate things, it makes it way easier if you, uh, really do a good job here. Um, so once I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that, I could divide the polygon into fourths if I want to, and I'll hit OK. And then after that, I'll just piece it to where my upper mouth is. There you go. All right, so now we got our upper lip on there. And uh, yeah, just do that for the rest of the process. And in the next video, I'll show you how to get everything moving. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.